following up on the video that we did the other day about building a house or buying land or something in Bali, I thought I thought I'd show you what you can get for your money's worth um, and what to expect. So, a standard building block is what they call an ara or ten ara or whatever. Um, so one ara is ten meters by ten meters, so it's a hundred square meters. And this is approximately an ara. So it's a bit of a messy one here. It's about seven meters across the front and about probably twelve or something down there. And and you can fit a standard standard barley size house. So there's there's one house there, and the black one's another house. Um, and and the one I know on this side is my mate. That's Katut, as in Mother and Katut. Katut built a house here last year. Uh, well, it took him about probably six months or so to build it. Now it's pretty pretty important to, to realise that if you come over here and you've got a short time schedule and you need to get into a place as quick as you can, there are plenty of developers over here building houses, building nice places and selling them off to you. Obviously they're going to make a profit out of that. But if you're living here and you've got the time and you've got a nice casual place to, to live that's comfortable, preferably close to the building site to be honest because sometimes you do a bit of supervision of the of the builders just to make sure that the little decisions that they make are the same big ones that you want um so i'll tell you what i'm gonna do he doesn't know yet but i'm gonna take you through katut's house here's katut's house here there's my little buddy there with the hat on hello g'day <laughs> it's katut's birthday today so we've come over for a party so his property starts there goes to the end there there's actually some more of my mates um, and and the house is, is as long as, the, as this empty lot next door So it's about probably 12 odd meters 12 or 13 meters long and inside that now katut has got a huge big um, statue and, and a, a temple spiritual sort of thing He's got a water feature downstairs. He's got a massive another temple upstairs There's enough room you could even have a small swimming pool if you didn't have the, the need for a temple you can have a, a barbecue deck up top and you've even got a car park with a lovely little rolling rolling door so it's a lovely nice welcoming cool place he's got his pet birds a beautiful statue and temple thing there and he's built this beautiful three bedroom two-story house which i'm going to take you through and i'll tell you how much it cost Perfect. Another little one there with some fish. <laughs> Beautiful plants. That's why I'm. There we go. So, nice big open entrance. You take yourself into this beautiful marble lined, a nice moderate little kitchen. Um, and a lounge room downstairs, your fridge. It's it's compact outside. He's got a lovely little semi outdoor bathtub and bathroom down there. Love the outdoor flow. He's got a bedroom downstairs, which is the guest bedroom. And he's got this upstairs. Beautiful day. <sighs> so upstairs, he's got this awesome living room, entertainment system, bedroom, ensuite, another bedroom here, and it goes out. Got a nice open area there to keep keep it nice and cool down the bottom and nice and breezy. And then he's built this massive, big, beautiful temple to give thanks and to to respect his his religious requirements and it's just i'll tell you what often you see these beautiful ornate hand carved temples on the most prime piece of real estate right by the waterfront or right on the front of the, of the property and it just shows that they have more respect for for what they believe in than um than actually what they want themselves it's it's quite deep but it's it's actually beautiful so that's pretty much it now how much to get yourself into a beautiful small so i wouldn't ever say it's a tiny home i'd say it's compact i'd say it's a little bit of downsizing 
they don't have the huge open spaces if it was me i'd probably have a big barbecue and maybe a pergola or something up here just so you've got a little bit more um a bit more entertaining area but you've got a lot of spot no, space downstairs as well just enough for a small swimming pool for my liking but that's me i'm western um the land alone so that land the same size see if we can go through here i'll look from up top here the land that we saw next door this piece here that that piece of dirt from there up to that bamboo there cost about 30 grand i'm talking australian dollars just just to give you a ballpark and the whole house cost about another 70. now i think because katut is a local he knows the right people and he was able to shop around and whatnot and he's probably used these builders before he got a good price um so you'd be pretty hard pressed to get to, for an outsider to get that at 30 unless you knew someone and unless you had time to not only pick the right pro block of dirt but uh, but also i know katut did nearly all of the design uh, himself so he, knew he wasn't using an architect and he sat down with the two builders and the one apprentice and three guys built this whole house in uh, over over probably five or six months did a great job spent a lot of time katut and i was down here up here all the time just picking up but the, the, the attention to detail is just beautiful you leave these big doors open you got the security grills there so you know you don't have to worry about those doors being closed the gardens everywhere um, and it's just lovely done so 100k thereabouts um, or a billion as they call it over here billion repair you can have your own piece of paradise they'd probably sell this for oh geez 150 maybe more um so yeah expect it's going to be more but in australian dollars this is somewhere between 100 and 150 thousand dollars built on the land owned outright not leased not a long term now you can also find blocks of dirt the same size as that where you lease that over 20 odd years you build your own home so instead of paying a huge amount up front for it you might only pay five or ten grand for the land but you're renting it for, t for 20 odd years but by the end of it <laughs> the house stays on the land and, and in 20 years time you own nothing but you get a much cheaper place to move into so look it's all relative there are rental places over here that are that are good deals there are some rental places over here that are pretty dodgy there's some beautiful places being built and i imagine looking at the construction that's happening across the road and in this region now i tell you what that's one question people are going to say whereabouts are we we're sort of heading from changu out the sort of back top left hand side of denpasar sort of region we're heading somewhere between changu and out towards tanalot so we're sort of out in the suburbs a bit it is a bit of a, a bit, bit of a drive to get into the city. I'd probably 30, 40 minutes if you had to work in the city in in, in Kuta or Ligian. Um About at least a good 20 minutes to get to my place in the middle of Denpasar. Um, there's a lot of expats around this way. There's a there's a Westerns or Australians and, and Americans and that either side of, of here and owning some property around here. So there's a, there's a reasonably good expat community, which means. You're also going to find there's some good restaurants around here. There's lots of tiny little warongs and local village style living. If you, if that's what you want to just sort of get away from the west and, and live a, a little bit more locally. And as with anywhere you're going to live in Bali, there are some pretty different customs and expectations of the local landowners. So this is why it's important to have, give yourself plenty of time to see if you fit into the local community maybe even knock on some doors, talk to someone if you've got an interpreter or someone, or if you can speak Bahasa, more's the better, but even just to, to find out what uh, what their expectations are. Sometimes they expect you to, to cough up a little bit of money for the banjar, for the local village police and uh, running the, the, the bill. It's usually not very much. It might be a couple of dollars a week or something like that, but that's also peace of mind to know that your house has been looked after by by the little village police when you're not around, the Pechelang as they call them. Um, and look, eventually I think this, all those rice fields there are going to be built out and they'll end up being being more nice little villas like this or nice little, little houses. But um, time will tell. Bali is expanding and, and land is, people say, oh, it's horribly expensive over here. Look, it really depends on where you go and what you want. If you want five-star dining, you're going to pay five-star price. 
Um, to get those good chefs, after COVID, they had to ship a shop internationally because a lot of the a lot of the ones that were here before took off and went overseas and where they could try and make a dollar. So they've had to bring in people, which means the price has got to go up because the cost of bringing them here and maintaining them is higher as well. Hey guys, well, that's just a little thing, a little bit of an addition to what you can rent and what you can buy in Bali. Um, I don't know how much this place would cost to rent. I, look, I'd probably say, with no pool, but three bedrooms, I think you'd be looking somewhere over a thousand dollars a month um, and maybe maybe half as much again like just it really depends I've seen people spending ten twenty thousand dollars a month on a on a pretty nice place but a, but with a pool so um, yeah somewhere nights I would think I'm not a real estate agent but I'm just trying to give you a ballpark idea um, you're looking probably twelve hundred bucks a, a month or something or yeah a bit over twelve fourteen grand a year and you, you could be living in a place like this um, so it's got gives you plenty of room gives you bar uh, on suites it gives you spare bedrooms if you've got family or if you want to run a business from home stuff like that plenty of options but hey it's my job to try and sell you real estate i'm just trying to give you a few ideas of what your dollar is going to get you when you get over here and there's plenty of simple little humble houses you can buy a small little one and a half bedroom place in the village for probably 50 grand outright with with no yard no parking and, and definitely no pool <laughs> virtually no hot water <laughs> tell you what the basic ones are pretty basic but but they're livable and I, I know that because i've lived in one for the first year or so that i was here and i didn't like it much i've got to say so there you go guys have fun looks like a beautiful sunset i'm gonna go downstairs and, and give katuna a big birthday kiss and have a good night so you guys have a good time i'll see you when you get here bye